Well, firstly, the first change which uh, we can see visibly is uh, the temple. And uh, this year was different from previous years because this year I was not traveling much, giving darshan in many countries. But in place of that, all the devotees were, they were coming here. So they had the chance to spend more time together and also to learn more about the path. This is which is very important. Because when you are on a path, you should know about that path. And this year was like that. There was a lot of uh, education and studying and really this year they did uh, about the Guru Gita, so knowing truly what is, who is the Guru actually. And um, for many changes, like I said, with the temple and uh, many ashrams also, many like in Czech they try, they, are, they bought the, uh, the land and they built the ashram there in South Africa also. So there is lots of movement happen within Bhakti Marga also. And uh, yeah. Well, changes in the world is quite difficult to say because uh, <clears throat> when we look at uh, the surrounding, we see the same stories as every year, you know. We don't see really something have moved forward. It's just the faces get changed, but the stories carry on the same. <laughs> so there is not really big change. You see, you take one person, you know, replace it from another person. It's like uh, people die, they keep coming. But yet the samskaras, the, the, the attitude and all their past things which they carry with them, you know, stay the same. They don't want to change. You know. So this is years and hopefully maybe the, you see it not only one year, two years, but the years people have tried to change something. But nonetheless, what we can see there is a very great uh, awakening also in the people, you know, because uh, they start to search. You know. Many people is searching, you know, you see it on the spiritual path, especially. There is more and more people that are longing to know more, deeper, where they belong, who they belong, you know, who they are firstly. Because life can't be just be random like that. So you see the changes also in a positive way into the world, not only into the negative way, but uh, individually you see a lot of changes. You see, we actually in this place, this used to be the temple. Uh, we used to have the altar behind. But only few people can be here. The more you have space to accommodate the people, more there is a gathering, more the energy, more the that's of belonging there it is inside it. You know. And you see even this temple now, it is still small. <laughs> so we can't say that by building the bigger, uh, the bigger temple, you know, it changed something, but still, Still people complain, they don't have space. <laughs> you see, the deities, it is God Himself. You know? And when you have the Divine in front of you, you can easily connect to. It is like your Ishtadev is the same. And when you connect to your Ishtadev, it becomes your reality. So when the deity is there in the temple, the people are connecting to the deity. They feel that, yes, they are being heard.
for the, the prayer being heard, and uh, but they feel home. That is one of the most important thing to build that that relationship with the Lord Himself. You know, you allowed yourself to transform. You allowed your mind to be to take rest at His feet. So this is where the temple remind oneself uh, that the, our mind must repose on the feet of the Lord. Living bhakti is not only this little time which one is sitting and praying. You know, living bhakti means each moment of one life. Like Lord Krishna himself said in the Gita, you know, I'm ever present at each moment with my devotee. There's not a single time that my devotee don't think of me. So meaning that anything that the devotee is doing, still the Lord is placed first. So living bhakti, meaning to re remind oneself but he is the most important. He is the one which is inside of us. He is the one which is in each person which we meet. And it is him that we long for. I say very often that the world will engulf the people, you know, the mind of the people. Maya will take over, you know. But uh, who allowed that to happen? It is your choice. It is each person's choice. So this theme of uh, living bhakti, meaning living each moment knowing that God is with you. You are not alone, you know. People may come in your life and go, you know. You have all kind of relationship will come and go. But God, when He come, he stay forever. When he reveal himself, he stay forever. And that, that the permanent relationship, what we should aim for. Not only, like I said, when we're doing our sadhana, but at each moment of your life, talk with him, call for him. That doesn't mean that you should stop your daily routine, but in contrary, you know, that find me in what you're doing. That's what he said throughout the Gita to Arjun. I am there with you, but see me. Actually, when uh, we were told, we were, when they told me about the to do an interview to give a message for this uh, for the coming year. I was thinking, you know, what will be very important is to to strike now for building living communities, not just a community to come together once a week, you know, but try not. I'm not talking about an ashram. I'm talking about living like a small place with each people living their own life, you know, each people having their own little house and everything. But at the same time, contribute together, come together regularly for prayer, for singing, for doing the sadhana. So that's what is important nowadays. So I was thinking about that. That would be nice if uh, in countries they start to build like that. You know, if people want, to, the devotees want to live together, that will be a strength for each another. The very often people are scared of uh, community life, thinking, oh, you know, I will be invaded or whatever. It's not about that. You see, if it is clear, you know, but uh, you have your own place, you have your own things to do. You just respect the certain, not rules, but guidelines in life, which 
it is very simple on the, in the bhakti path, you know, the guideline is prayer, chanting, sadhana. That doesn't mean that you should not go out and do your job, then you can go out and do your job. But participate also in the community life together. The services, each one serve the others, you know. At the same time, the greater service is towards the deity. The, this is not only the brahmacharya or only the uh, pujaris, but it is uh, when it is community based, then everybody look after as it is their own. Well, I'm very happy actually that it is growing, but the the the. the the thing is that everything which grows very quickly also go down very quickly. This is the danger of it. You see, that's why the message must be clear. The message of vegetarianism and uh, veganism must be clear. You know? You know? And also what is the most cl uh, clear things about that is about the non-violence towards nature. You know, so if we respond to nature through non through violence, we will get violence. But if we respond to nature in a non-violence way, in a loving way, then nature will respond back in the same way. So when I'm talking about um, being vegetarian, you see, Clearly, it's imposed that whatever you're receiving, like for example milk or um, cheese or whatever, must be from a happy cow, which you know. When I'm talking about vegetarian, it doesn't mean that uh, you go to a supermarket and buy the milk, and same supporting the same industry. Uh, I'm talking about being, you have your, you know where the cow is, but the cow will, once when the cow doesn't produce milk anymore, the cow will not be killed. You know, there is farms like that, we have also a farm here and in Switzerland also, which is functioning in that way. And in that, you can be vegetarian. Otherwise, being vegan is the best then you don't support that system of killing and taking life. But you support a system of non-violence towards nature. Look, people always uh, find excuses, you know, for not doing something positive. But uh, if you have a party, if you have to visit somebody, if you, you have to do something which uh, you think value for you, you always have time. A paragraph of the Bhagavad Gita, or even a verse of the Bhagavad Gita, take only one or two minutes. Uh, and it's not much. While you read it, you are giving food, the right food to the mind. You see, food you eat to fill your stomach, but food doesn't bring much things to you. So what process everything is the mind. So what you feed the mind, that is the most important thing. If you feed your mind with dirt, you can't expect something positive out of it. You know? But if you feed your mind with positivity, positive things, of course positive things is not very enthusiasm. You know? You don't give excitement, but it changes something in you and in this world itself. People want only quick result, you know. But first you must learn to transform your mind. We were talking about resolution, no? for, for For moving to a new year. How many new years have passed, you know? How many people have taken so many resolutions? You know, like I said, 
the mind is not material. It's not something that you say, yes, you change, uh, you can uh, say, take out uh, something and put it aside and then transform it for next year. No, everybody said next year I would be a better person, I will stop drinking, I will stop smoking, I will stop eating meat, I will stop this, I will stop that. But do they really change? No, they don't. They change for one week, but then the next uh, group of friends, or they sit on their computer doing the same uh, things, again the same dirt arise inside that mind. Nothing has changed. Now, neither her, the years have changed, but the person have not changed. So that's why I said, feeding the mind with the right thing is very important. Even if you should start first, it was one sentence, one uh, chapter, one, not chapter, one uh, verses of uh, the Bhagavad Gita itself. <laughs> I'm very happy with uh, the devotee here. You know. But what I would like, like I said, education is very important. That they educate themselves, not about everything, but about their path. But they know where they stand. Yeah. That's why I said to read the Bhagavad Gita. This gives them a clear understanding about their life. And also, you see, then through them they can influence others also to change. I say it's important because what you receive from God is not for you only. It is also for the others, for the sharing and to remind people of the love of God.